Well, good morning, afternoon, evening, guys. Um, it is Black Friday, so I thought I'd do another of my Graham shows, quick uh, morning updates. How is you doing? How is Thanksgiving? Trust you had a great day, and I uh, had a good day alone here with my family. We were going to gather with some friends, but in the end, postpone that, And um, but uh, we're going to get together today and do a l- outdoor walk somewhere in Connecticut, so... Looking forward to going for a little bit of a hike, <coughs> excuse me, and an outdoor picnic today. So, um, yeah, <coughs> well, today is Black Friday, the spending day of the year. <laughs> it's the day where people buy all sorts of junk they don't need. But, um, <coughs> yeah, so happy shopping, <laughs> whatever you're doing. Um, hey, really quick thought for you today, but, um, you know, it's a really interesting thing, but the kingdom of God's a weird place. <laughs> Well, it's not a weird place. It's, the kingdom of God's a normal place, and we live in a weird place. But the kingdom of God seems often upside down to the way in which we live in this world. You die to live. You go last to be first. Uh, you give to receive. You know, it's, it's uh, an upside down kingdom in a way, or a right side up kingdom. And <clears throat> here's a little key I've learned in my life over the years, is that many of the things, God is not often against you having things he just doesn't want you to put them before him. So there's many things that from a religious point of view, we look at and we think, God doesn't want me to do that. God doesn't want me to have that. And God's like, no, I'm actually for that. But I want to give it to you. I don't want you to produce it yourself. And, um, you know, the whole thing today, people are buying things, buying stuff. I was just having a conversation with my daughter. I said, have you found any bargains, anything you want to buy? And she she asked me if there's anything I want, and I, I can't say I think I've got everything I need. I don't don't really want to buy anything. Don't really need anything. But here's my point in saying that God God's not against you having stuff, but He doesn't want you <coughs> you to be like the heathen. <coughs> Excuse me. Remember Matthew six. Jesus talks about people who don't know God and they're obsessed with what are we? How are we going to eat? How are we going to drink? How are we going to walk? clothes are we going to put on and Jesus's whole point is not that these things are wrong he says your father knows you have needed these things and then he says if you allow God to God will give you better clothes he'll clothe you like Solomon yet he'll feed you better than the birds of the earth your father knows all the things you have need of and Jesus in a way sums that up in Matthew 6 23 and says seek first the the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. I call that the law of first things. And it's a really interesting law. There are about 20 examples I've found all the way through the Bible where God basically comes to people and says, I want you to put me first. And if you put me first, I will bless your socks off with everything that's left. But if you put me second, third and fourth, it will never work I show you that again and again and again and again. Do you remember, um, it's interesting, the Lord came to Abram and said, I'm going to give you a son. And, uh, you know, if you look, biologically, Abraham had many kids after Isaac, but God never referred to them. He only he always looked at Isaac as like your only begotten son. And there's a day came when God called Abraham, you know, in uh, Genesis, around about 19 and 22, sacrifice. He said, take your only son, Even though Abraham had other children with Hagar and other servants at the time, take your only son, take him on a journey of three days and three nights, type of the cross, to a place called Mount Moriah in Salem, which later became Jerusalem, and uh, offer him as a sacrifice to me. And in a way, God was saying, I want to be first in your life. Now, of course, we know the story. God didn't want to kill Isaac, but he wanted Abraham to be willing to put him first. Um... You know, it's just a, such a simple principle in a way. They come, the children of Israel come into the promised land, if you will, and there are 10 big cities in the promised land, the Decapolis, we call them. Deca, 10, 10 cities, decimal, same Latin root. And God says to the people of Israel, okay, they were all, apart from Joshua and Caleb, they were all born in the desert. They'd never seen a city. They'd never seen a chariot. They'd never seen a, you know, a gold coin or whatever, if you will. And they come in and the Lord says, I'm going to give you all of these cities. I'm going to give you vineyards you didn't plant, houses you didn't build. But one test, he says, I want you to give me the first tenth, the first portion. And they come in and they supernaturally conquer Jericho, massive wall city, incredible. They conquer it and, and it's, it's easy. They don't lose one person conquering it. 
And then there's one guy called um, Achan who decides he's not going to give God the spoil. He's going to take some of that first portion and hide it under his tent, so to speak. And then the next day they go and attack a tiny little village and they lose they, they lose about 30-odd men, I think it is. They, they have a massive defeat. And uh, Joshua figures out straight away, somebody's touched God's portion. Here's my point in saying this. God, I think God actually wants, or generally speaking, God wants you blessed. God wants you to have stuff. Everything you can see on Amazon.com today, I have no shares in them. God's not against you having things. He's not against you being well-clothed, driving well, uh, living in a good home, all of those things. But he says, put me first. He says, don't spend your life pursuing stuff. Spend your life pursuing me. Now, in one sense, we don't need to chase God. I don't like the concept God chases because God's God says, you'll find me when you seek me with your whole heart. So when I say pursuing God, God's not the problem. <laughs> I don't need to pursue God, but I need to awaken in me the pursuit of God. When we talk about hungering after God, we're not saying we're hungry after God because God's hiding and he's holding out on us, but rather we're hungry after God because at times we fill our lives up with things which don't satisfy. Um, and instead we need to sort of do violence in ourselves and turn for a season. That's what fasting is all about and say, Lord, I'm going to hunger after the living bread that truly satisfies. I'm going to go after you in that way. So I think God's message to us today is seek first my kingdom, seek first the righteousness which is my faith, put me first, and then rather than you chase stuff, stuff will chase you. Yeah, I think God wants us to live in a place where stuff chases us. Yeah, come on, I'll finish with this, but I remember years ago coming to speak here in America, I was actually speaking for Brian Simmons, he used to have a church down in Connecticut, and um, I left France in, um, I don't know what it was, probably like about November um it's just about 2004 or 5 and it was actually quite nice weather you know when it's nice weather for a few days and it's like your brain begins to forget you know it's going to get cold soon and i left france when it was actually quite nice it was south of france where i live and i flew into new england and it was freezing cold snow everywhere and i suddenly realized i hadn't even brought any kind of winter coat with me I just had a, a really light summer coat and uh, clothes, and I'm I'm speaking at Gateway Church in uh, New Haven area, and I'm freezing cold. So one day I decide I'm going to go and buy a you know a long winter coat, and um, I leave the church there, and I walk up, and there was a Burlington Coat Company just around the corner from the church, and I walk up, and I find a nice coat. I go to the checkout, and I suddenly realize I've left my money in my hotel. Arr! put the coat back on the rack, you know, walk outside. And as they get outside, somebody says, oh, Pastor Graham, God told me to give you this. And they gave me the exact money for the coat. So I buy my coat and I'm really pleased with my new warm coat. And two days later, I'm in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and I go into a, a pastor's office, uh, uh, Bishop Jim Mackay, a great guy. And uh, when I walk in, he says, Graham, take that old coat off. And I'm like, old coat? And, uh, and he says, he said to me a few days ago, I bought a lovely leather coat and the Lord told me to give it to you. So he takes off my two day old coat and he puts this beautiful, brand new, expensive coat on me. And long story short, by the end of the trip in the US, I have about, I think it was three or four coats that have been given to me all supernaturally without me saying anything. And um, I remember, I just have this memory of getting on a plane in Detroit, flying back to Paris, and I'm putting all of these coats in the overhead bin above me, and I just sat laughing to myself. I'm sure people thought I was crazy, thinking, Lord, why? Why are you giving me all these coats? And just that verse came to me, said, seek first the kingdom, your righteousness, and everything you need will be added to you. And the Lord said to me, don't, don't chase stuff. Chase me, and stuff will chase you all the days of your life. So happy Black Friday. <laughs> May your day be filled with wonder and joy. But chase God today. Chase his word, chase his presence, chase his people. Uh, put him first in our life. Good. Hey, I'm going to be back later today with a q and I'm going to be doing some question and answers on the subject of healing, how to receive healing and kind of roadblo roadblocks um, in terms of receiving healing from God. So check that out later this afternoon. Have a great day, guys. Love you. Bye for now.